Hi everyone and welcome to lesson 2 under the PQE tab using the Water in the World website. This lesson, lesson 2, is going to be about analysing cartograms using the PQE method. So your success criteria, by the end of the lesson you need to know cartograms and you need to be able to gather data from a cartogram using the PQE method. So a refresher from last lesson, what does the PQE method stand for? So it stands for pattern. You need to identify an obvious idea or piece of information that the map or the graph is telling you. Then you need to quantify. You need to turn that idea into a number. And then the E stands for exception. So you need to point out anything that doesn't align with your P. The PQE method is used for identifying a piece of information or gathering information from maps and graphs and other sets of data. So let's have a look at what cartograms are. So a cartogram is a type of map where the size of the section indicates how prominent a feature is. So the map warps and changes. This is a cartogram for the population of England as well. So you can see there's a map of the United Kingdom here. And then we've got a cartogram um, based on population size. So that's pretty interesting there. We can see how most people live in the southeast of England. So the map warps and changes based on how many people live in the certain areas around England and Wales as well. And this is where uh, the United Kingdom is located on the world map for you too. So in this lesson, we're going to use bouncy maps to practice our PQE skills. So we'll do an example here together first. So what you do first is you click on the picture to access the bouncy maps cartogram on global population. And you can see that we're going to get a regular looking world map. And you can see we've got regular map here toggled. That's 7.7 .7 billion people. But then we can click this toggle to bounce the map to make a cartogram. So we can see the size of the countries changes based on their population. And if we hover over the top of these countries, we can see how many people live there as well. So for my P, I've said that countries in Asia have high populations, which they do. We can see Asia here. We've got China in India. So to quantify that, we could have the People's Republic of China has 1.4 billion people, India has 1.4 billion people, Indonesia has 27.6 million, Pakistan has 21.6 million as well, Japan, you shouldn't forget as well, has 126.9 million. So that's some data that I could put in there to justify my P by quantifying that information. And then I need to point out any exceptions. So I need to find some countries that have quite low populations in Asia, but I might struggle with that. So Hong Kong, 7.4 million, that's not as much. Cambodia, 16.5, that's not heaps, but they're very tiny countries, so they have very high population density. Philippines is quite a lot, Indonesia is quite a lot, and then we start to move into Oceania. So I might want to use Hong Kong as my exception if I wanted to have an E. So what you need to do for your task for this lesson is We've provided you with 12 different bouncy maps. So what you need to do is complete two PQEs for each of the bouncy maps below. So first off, we have a bouncy map on GDP. So GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product. And this term means how wealthy a country is based on their value of their goods and services. So again, by clicking on the picture, it'll take you to straight to that map uh, on GDP. We'll wait for that mode. Uh, map to load and then we can bounce it. You see you've got one on rice production, CO2 emissions, cows, chickens, coffee production, slavery, um, developmental aid, how many Catholics are in the world. We've got a bouncy map on how much gold is produced and found and where it is found. We've got population like we did for our example. And then lastly, we have a bouncy map on solar energy. So you can see here, if we go back up to our first bouncy map, a bouncy map on GDP. So we can see how rich the countries around the world are. So let's bounce the map. So we can see that wow, United States and China and Japan are pretty big as well. So that's the ones we might uh, want to use there. So we could have countries in Asia again, or some countries in Asia have quite high GDP. Uh, your point, oh, sorry, your pattern might also be that United, the United States uh, has the most money out of any country in North America.
So that could be one of the patterns that you identify. So there's plenty of data here. You need to do two PQE methods per bouncy map. So thanks for watching guys. And remember, if you want to stay updated to any new websites that are made or any other new lessons that are made in existing websites like this one, please make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.